All right, gentlemen, please stay with us. I want to bring in Kellyanne Conway, former senior counselor to President Trump, and Molly Hemingway, editor-in-chief at The Federalist, both Fox News contributors. Kellyanne, um, again, we have a secretary of defense who's on bed rest, who was missing or not in touch or nobody was looking for him for days. So how does the administration at this point still keep the American public in the dark with the president, you know, calling a lid tonight? This, this, seems, this seems like, I can't imagine this having happened in the Trump administration. Well, it wouldn't have for several reasons. Either President Trump would be under wing or in the press briefing room or calling reporters into the Oval Office. If it were later into the night, maybe he'd be firing off a couple of tweets that we were told were so chaotic and so crisis-laden. But at least then you would know what the commander-in-chief was thinking. You would also have spokespeople from the Department of Defense. Look, I think that the Secretary of Defense being absent all those days should concern everyone because it, it, they basically proved he's not a vital part of the conversation here, of the coordination. Um, Laura, this is exactly why who's commander-in-chief is important. And when you, de when you stop designating terrorists as terrorists, you're asking them, you're inviting them to be terrorists again. And you're inviting them to threaten America, her interests, her people, and her values, her freedom. Um, I think what, it, what, what the gentleman was just saying is incredibly important because when people look at this, they say, this is not some distant fight that's not ours. People are so concerned now that what's happening there is affecting us here. And this is why President Trump long ago pivoted to a general election strategy against Biden. He wants you to think about their two presidencies, their two administrations. Sure, economy, energy, border. But this particularly, as he said last night in Fox News' town hall, first president in 72 years to not start a new, new war. We called terrorists terrorists. We brought hostages home. Um, but if you look at Iran, who funds so much of the, what we're talking about in this world, it's so scary. When you look at Iran, they were starving to make deals by the time we left our administration. Now they basically Empowered. produce three million, three million barrels a day. They stockpile over 80 billion. You know where it's going. You see on the screen where it's going. But Laura and Molly, I think this is why even in the personal attribute questions, Trump is beating Biden, who has a plan, who cares about the middle class, who has the energy and ability, who has the vision and experience. But also on all the major issues, security and affordability, um, people are very concerned and they are, they're against Biden. I think they're hiding Biden. Do you know, last point, we've heard more about and from Hunter Biden than Joe Biden the last two days. We've seen more of Hunter than Joe Biden. Molly. Disgrace. Well, it was interesting last night. One of the questions that was asked at the town hall was about some concern that people might have that chaos would return if Trump What's this? were elected. And Trump's answer was pointing out some of the chaos that we're seeing in the country right now, not just domestically, but internationally. And this is a really serious situation. I mean, it's a serious situation that the Houthis have been bombing shipping routes sure. and that that affects so many things. Something needs to be done about this. But we've also been in conflict, either in a proxy way or otherwise, with these people for quite some time now. This is the third administration. And you want to have good communication with the American people. You also want to do things in a constitutional manner. And again, Biden is not the first president to violate what the Constitution says about how Congress should be involved when launching airstrikes. But this is a good example of why Congress should be involved, because we do need to think about, to the point that... What's um, next? Yeah. Well, and, and also uh, how we're going to deal with this. Being involved in a global conflict in multiple parts... When we're broke. Yes. And uh, it, but but it, it matters to people and how we do it matters. And it doesn't seem like a lot of our defense industry or that our defense leadership have been thinking about how to effectively win wars. They're very good about entering into well, them. Well, we haven't won they're a very, war since World War Two. Right. They're very right, good about right? having them go for a long 70, time. Eight years. What is that? But we need to know more about what their strategy is before we let them do yet another one. I think, um, you know, Billy Joel saying it's a matter of trust. You know, who's trusting What's happening here? And that's why you really do have to have someone in place. You can say, OK, even if we disagree with this action, they're laying it out for mm -hmm. us. Peace through strength. That's what President Trump talked about last night. And when you have a weak economy, when you're self-loathing, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, mm -hmm. you're teaching people to hate your country. You're supporting the pro-Hamas uh, protesters on college campuses. Maybe they're going to be supporting the Houthis tomorrow. I think this is why um, Trump right now is, he really is re, uh, realigning what's the traditional Democratic coalition of voters. I mean, he's really burrowing into Hispanics and African Americans, independents, first-time voters who are young or maybe not young. Maybe they're just first-time voters, Laura. But the other, the other thing here is that we made it the party of the worker. We made it, the, the, it was an administration that was there for the worker. When you look at, when you even talk to Iowa's caucus goers, 
they're mentioning things like this. They're not just talking about inflation. They're not just talking about the, the cost of gro gas and groceries and the border crisis. They're talking about what's going on all around the world, the hot spots. And we were told crisis in a tweet, chaos and palace intrigue. There's crisis and chaos everywhere we look. The everywhere fingers you look pointed is a hot back spot. at them once again. But remember, the uh, the adults will now be in charge. Oh, yes. see what's happening there. But you know, yeah. we do have Soul a real different vision here of foreign policy, and I think we were robbed of that in the 2020 election to have an actual debate about whose foreign policy was better. It was kind of asserted by corporate media that Biden had a better foreign policy, and we now have this unique situation where we can just compare compare the four years under the Trump administration with the four years under Biden and see who had the just objectively speaking a far better record. Does does that not speak to the fact that the U.S. media has so fallen down on its job mm -hmm. to first vet Joe Biden in 2020? He was not up to the job. Everybody knew it, and they hid it for him. He was a hologram candidate, and he's a hologram president who calls a lid on a night like tonight. This is a failure across the board of the elites, the establishment, and the corporate media, Molly. You hit this every day. They have a lot to be accountable here tonight. Yeah, and they're very much responsible for getting us into this situation by failing to vet. And it's why it's so important that people are able to have a good evaluation of, of what they're getting into. There's one reason. Uh, the name is Trump. Everything flows from Trump. If you challenge anyone to answer a question about Joe Biden as our commander in chief, or our foreign policy, or, the, or this secretary of defense being missing, and you ask them to answer the question, Laura Molly, they can't go 10 words or 10 seconds without saying Trump five times. They're, they're so obsessed with him, and so the Trump derangement syndrome is real. There's no vaccine, no therapeutic for it. And uh, it's so real that it was okay not to vet him. It's okay to lie. It's okay to pretend that what you see, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, not up to the task while we are at war in so many places, including at our southern border. That's okay because the alternative is Trump. It's outrageous. I actually think that's part of the reason why they have such hatred toward Trump. You remember in 2016, they said, if he were elected, we would have nuclear conflict. We would have conflict all over the world. He wouldn't be up to handling the task of all these global issues in play. And then when he not only won, which surprised so many people, but then did such an effective job. And you see even again with the, with the town hall last night, where he had you know, pretty effective responses to these questions that were being asked. I actually think that's part of the reason why people hate him so much, is that they resent that he has command and control and is funny and is, you know, and is engaging with people. This was all over the Internet 12 hours ago that this was going yeah. to take place. President Trump was dining with President Xi of China at Mar-a-Lago. And I was bef between the main course and dessert, you know, we unleashed... <laughs> A missile attack against one of our adversaries. Uh, nobody knew about it. Syria. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember it very well. He said. That, Didn't have a 12 hour notice that this was going to happen. Nope. He said that crazy person gassed kids, and here's my response. Um, and well, but, but isn't that funny too? We were told we were the leakers. Nobody even knew things like that were happening as they were happening. And what does President Trump, he even said it last night in the Fox News town hall. He said they broadcast everything, or he said in an interview recently, they broadcast everything. You don't tell your enemies what you're going to do before you do it. They're your enemies for a reason. They don't, we don't have this kind of discipline. We don't have this kind of coordination and collaboration right now because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, as a number one and number two in, in our nation's government, um, make otherwise smart people say really stupid things all the time. We have a cabinet of firsts, yes. and then we have Tony Yippee. Blinken who started his tenure as Secretary of State essentially getting lectured by China. Remember that meeting in Alaska? And now, headline in the New York Times, Blinken talks a grand vision for Mideast peace, but hits a wall in Israel. Strikes expand battleground for the West for the war in the Middle East. I mean, it's not surprising. There's been a very muddled vision there. There have been mixed messages about what, what our role is with, with Israel and um, and it's not surprising. All right, ladies, hold on. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.